Hello everyone, welcome. For this video, I have uh, one 2080 Ti for you. It's Founders Edition. The cooler is right here. And I have just started to work on this device. And I said, all right, let's make a video about it. Because we have liquid metal damage. As usual, we need to rebow everything. And on top of that, these three RAM chips are with underfill. They are a little bit tricky to remove. And also all RAM chips are with the bad data code. As you can see, we have a data code 8R. And this one is bad. So we have to replace them all. I contacted the customer and said, all right, uh, we have to do a, a lot of work. We have to replace all the chips. This will be really expensive repair and he said okay let's make it that's why I, st I started working on this device let me switch over to the microscope and show you what we have there the good thing is that the person uh, who applied the liquid metal before that he covered it with some stuff here the, the capacitors on the GPU chip so they don't make a contact with the liquid metal but something went wrong and this liquid metal now is almost everywhere as you can see we have a little bit here on this side and if I continue here on the bottom side we have also a little bit more liquid metal but this is not a problem the interesting part comes right here let me show the top side of the GPU and here we have the top side completely covered with liquid metal and this stuff is not going I, I'm not able to remove it from there just not I have to remove the GPU chip and this will be the point of this video uh, this this RAM chips on the bottom they are underfilled and this is the proper uh, solution for for this 20 Ti's problem with the bending problem right here and they like to rip pads on this uh, RAM chips closer to the PCI slot I have a video about this problem you can watch it and also um, I made a video about the micron problem with these memory chips you can also watch it i will link it on the screen right now here i just started removing the uh, underfill around this ram chip and i decided to make a video so let's continue together i will preheat the board and all right, let's start from here. I cover the PCI slot with cotton tape. I cover the GPU chip with a, a aluminum tape. And now the board is on the preheater at 150 degrees C. And we will start the removing process, the cutting process. The tools, the, the tool I am using is looking like this. Let me adjust the microscope for you. And let's speed up this process.
right as you saw we scrape up the the, the center view from all sides right here also and i just removed the components on the bottom side and i will show you what the idea is in the removing process now let's let's clean this pad here So what we have now, the center view is, uh, is scraped off from the corners. I also removed all the components on this bottom side because when I start the removing process with the machine, I want to take this tool and slide it under the RAM chips. And with this movement under the RAM chip very slowly, when the solder is so when the solder balls are melted, I can very safely lift the chip without ripping any pads on the board. These components on the bottom side, they're re really easy, don't care about them. We will solder it, uh, we will solder all of them in the end of this video. So let's remove this aluminum tape from here and let's check what's the plan. The plan, the plan is like this. First, we'll go for the GPU chip, remove it. After that, immediately, uh, I will change the nozzles on the machine when the board is still hot, and I will start removing from this side uh, all these RAM chips, and I will leave these three to the end. So we, I can show you what uh, what the process is there with these three. All right, let's begin. everything is removed let's see what we have here under the microscope as you can see we have still more under view here but everything looks perfect no no ripped pads this is just under view we have to clean it right now i will do uh, only this one with you to, to show you the process and the rest i will do it off camera so
basically that's it you want to i want to burn the cylinder fill this is the only way to remove it after that applying a new solder on the pads and remove everything nice and easy all the surrounding components like capacitors and all this kind of stuff is not a problem we can place it after that the big the biggest problem here is to not rip any pads that's the whole idea now let's clean and see what we have And so let's take a look. We have a couple couple scratches right here on this line and this line also. Here's the solder mask. The solder mask is removed here, but these are the biggest problems. It's nothing. And we have a little bit more underfill here. I will I will remove it very easily. And only one missing pad is this one right here and this is not connected and the not connected pads they are not so not so stable on the board they are very very easy to be to be removed from there but this is nothing it's not not connected to anything so that's the whole process i will continue with the, the other two and we can uh, clean the whole board after that so i cleaned everything and this is how it looks like and i also f forgot to, to turn the recording on and you missed how i solder all these components but not a big of a deal five minutes of work with the jvc tweezers or tweezers really fast so uh we have missing pads right here three and here we have also two and on this side we have one as I said, these pads are not connected and they are not so stable, so they almost always are missing when when we replace the memory chips. From here, let's start to cleaning to clean the the other areas. So the other RAM chips right here and also the GPU area. I will uh, speed up this process. Enjoy the music. and shiny all the corners here i have missed uh, two pads 
let's correct it right now and everything looks good to me Now these pets are also, also good looking. Let's continue with the RAM chips on the right side. Everything looks perfect. On the top. Top side also and check the left side in the GPU. Here we have also one pet that needs correction. Right here. So let's make it right now. This is a ground pad, doesn't matter, I like everything to be at the same level. And now it's looking nice. Let's clean also this area. And from here the board is ready, we can continue with the GPU chip. The GPU chip is sitting right here on the side and uh, let's mount it on the holder and clean it also. After that we have to reboil it and install and solder everything to the board. We have a uh, board holder. Mount the GPU chip like this. Point in the fox. Let's flip, cut this the disordering quick on the side. And we can start. Clean soldering iron. All right, let's begin. Just nice and slowly, don't rush it. We don't want to rip pads here. I'm not pushing at all. So with that old solder removed, Let's wick it. Just like that. Take a new one. and finish the job. I need everything to be nice and flat for the new soldering balls. Now it's looking good. In the tip and leave it on the side. No. So let's clean the chip. Uh, 
everything clean and here on this side uh, this material which was covering the capacitors is all burnt I like to to clean my chips before um, reboiling an ultrasonic cleaner I will do that and we can continue with the reboiling process after that now the chip is cleaned but I don't like this stuff on the side and let's let's remove it because it's looking terrible I don't know what this is but it's burnt now let's use the tweezers and try to remove it Now I removed uh, everything from the top side, so with the tweezers, I scrape it up and I also clean the chip one more time in ultrasonic cleaner, now it's perfectly clean, I will show you after that the result. Now let's continue with the reboiling process, we are gonna use here solder balls 0.5 millimeters, lead free, and let's apply the flux this flux is from uh, chip quick and it's also for lead three solder and using a brush very gently to apply the flux in the whole area to cover the whole area I'm always working uh, from inside to outside movements like this also the stencil is perfectly clean cleaned everything is perfectly cleaned I like to do that because I have no headache after that so let's take a look under the microscope if we have any dust or hair we have to remove it right now and using the best flux application tool my finger I will spread it a little bit more under the microscope Just like that I saw here one pad which is looking not so perfect a little bit darker let's scrape it with the tweezers now it's looking good I want this flux to be as perfect as possible applied so I don't have to make any any adjustments later when the balls are soldered now everything looks nice Let's place the stencil on the top and check the alignment. Looks perfect. And now the solder balls are coming. I just cover the whole area with a little bit of shake. And remove the rest. Now in every single hole is one ball. Lift the stencil very carefully. 
check the result we have balls everywhere and they are sitting on the place right here on this corner two balls are touching let's correct it right now just like that and adjust the other also let's check for any imperfections nope everything looks very nice let's adjust only this bow on the corner and that's it so i'm going to to reef wall these bows with the reef wall machine and after that we will continue so now let's continue from here we have the board we have the new round chips on the side and we have also the reboot gpu chip i have also cleaned it i will show it uh, under the microscope to see how clean now it is so here's the gpu chip no dirt here all this uh, burn stuff is away and it's looking very very nice and clean so let's switch you again to the top view and uh, we have to make the strategy right now how to proceed i think the best idea is to solder the ram chips first and after that when the board is too hot i will change the nozzles on the rework station and solder the gpu chip at the end so let's continue again let uh, flux for lead free on every single ram chip using the brush to apply it now we can also take a closer look to the PCI SWOT area to these three RAM chips there to show you how they how they look like now again So here we have it. Now it's everything with flux, but you can barely see here on the corners. I have uh, I left a bit more underfill. I will not clean that. It's not necessary to clean that because if I start to clean it, may maybe I will cause more more damage to the board. Now everything is in good condition, in perfect condition for uh, for the soldering process. So I will leave everything like it is. So let's place the round chips. Let's align the round chips one by one. Now the round chips are placed with the, the correct orientation and we will start the soldering process right now. I will just apply a tiny bit of flux on the GPU area, but I will not place the GPU chip right now. I will do that after soldering the RAM chip first, the RAM chips.
how it's everything cleaned everything soldered and the board was in ultrasonic cleaner let's start to measuring the resistance to our voltage rails after replacing the ram chips and reballing the gpo chip we have to check everything um, let's start with the 12 volts all right the second eight pin no shorts five volt rail also looking good the core is also fine and the memory 43 for micron is perfect let's check the 1.8 volt also looking good x-rail nice the pci is what 12 volts kilo ohms 3.3 volts also looking good now let's power up the car together and see if, if this repair is successful or not taking the riser let's plug it in the power supply right i have one hdmi cable here let's plug it also i can place this on the bench so you can see the power draw use some thermal paste and i'm placing my fancy cooler on the top all right the first start let's see i'm powering the machine right now and we have no picture it's very bad as you can see the cart is drawing uh, 10 watts it's really low something is wrong here oh bad day bad day let's measure the voltages while the cart is running so let's start with the phases the core all right so we have 0 0.8 the cart is not recognized hmm. the memory memory is good let's check the pex rail and the pex is also there why why the cart is not recognized let's power it off all right i will not give up right here with all this work after all this work i will not give up let's find where the problem is I don't believe that uh, we have bad solder joints here or something like this. I'm pretty sure that everything is soldered perfect. So where we can start. All voltage is present. The card is not recognized. Let me switch over uh, to diode mode. Measure this data lines the first pair this one is good the second one is also good let's go on the back side measure the pex reset it's good and the reference quark plus and minus also looking nice the first pair of data lines on the back side also looking good so where can we go the first thing is PEX reset in my mind or not detected card so when all voltages are present PEX reset or BIOS chip let's check the PEX reset the PEX reset for this um, 
Founders Editions. The end gate should be on the back side. Let's take a look under the microscope and see where this is. So the PEX reset pin is right here and, and the reading is good. Let's find out where the logical gate is. It's not the so I think it was here on the top. Nope. Then it's on the bottom side. Oh, right here, right here. So you can also see it. I will adjust the picture. Here is the end gate. For PEX reset. Um, let me switch it to the resistance again and measure the resistance to the output and the and the VCC in voltage in. The first pin is voltage in right here. This is 1.8 volt for sure, and the output is kilo ohm. So we have no short circuit, no no short circuits here. Check the inputs. Why this is open line? The second one. Also. All right, we have we don't have connection here. And why this? Pads here on the bottom side are looking like this. Hmm. Maybe we have a missing component right here. We we have some uh, visible tool damage around this hole, and we have a for sure missing component right here. This should be, this is connected to the input pin right here to the third pin and it's not making a connection. This should be a pull up resistor I think because it's connected also to the voltage in 1.8 volts and goes here and after that goes to the third pin. This is for sure pull up resistor. Let's find out uh, what kind of resistor is this. So right now we are on the data sheet and I was wrong. So the first pin is on the bottom side and our voltage in is the five, is the five pin, so not the first pin. And uh, as you can see, we have a pull up resistor right here from 1.8 volts. So the same line as uh, VCC in, voltage in. And this pull-up resistor pulls uh, 1.8 volts to the second pin. And this one is missing. It's 10 kilo ohm, 0402. Let's solder one. Again on the board. So uh, this top pin is the fifth pin. So the first pin is right here. So the arrow is also right here. I'm so stupid. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. Here's the output voltage in and pull up, pull up resistor from voltage in to the second, to the second pin on the bottom. Let's apply flux, thin these pads, and solder a new 10 kilo ohm resistor there. have the resistors right here. Let's take one. All right, I, I catch this one. So let's solder it. Now, let's clean this area.
and check the card one more time. Maybe this was our problem. Again, top view. And let's pull it one more time. Hopefully this card is working. Hopefully. So much work. So you can see also the power draw. Again, everything connected. Thermal paste. Cooler. Now, powering the cooler. I'm switching you over to the test machine and let's see. So, powering on. What do we have? We have picture. Yes. So, we have picture. And I will switch it to the top view again. You can see the power draw right now on IDO is uh, about 40 watts. So, I'm turning the machine off. We have picture. This is very, very good sign. So from here, I will assemble the card and we will stress test it in Windows and also Linux. I'm in Linux right now. We have the picture from the card. Uh, let's run this mods test. You can see it on the screen. Test number 178. And this is the whole test. So, let's run this one and stress test the card. This test 178 is, uh, is testing the memory, but also is, is tracing the GPU chip itself. And this test is very accurate, so I use it a lot. And we have pass. Perfect. Uh, let's reboot the machine and go to Windows. Right now we are in, in Windows. The card is recognized. The drivers are loaded. You can see on the right side Dash Power Up GPU Z data from the sensors. Uh, and the card is working under a wall right now. Everything looks perfect. This repair is successful, thankfully because it was a lot of work and I hope that the customer will be also happy with this card we give it a second life thank you very much for watching like share and subscribe and be very careful when using liquid metal in the next video we will take a look at 13090 Nvidia damage it after replacing the thermal pads have a great day Bye.